Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. On this weekend, the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attack, we continue to offer prayers for all those who died, for all of the grieving family members, for all those who went to the scene to assist and to help, all those who uh, joined the services in defense of our country and of liberty. Our 40 hours begins this weekend, our parish feast day being Thursday, uh, Tuesday. And so it is the feast of the exaltation of the cross. And here in our gospel passage today, we have Jesus speaking about the cross, about his suffering. You know, I had one of those moments <clears throat> this past week, and I, let me begin with an analogy that, you know, if you're digging for gold, you begin to dig into the earth or the mountain, and you, you dig and dig and dig until you find a vein, and you mine it for everything that it's worth, but you don't give up. You continue to dig even further because there are other veins of gold, of precious metal that you can find as you continue your digging. It's an analogy in a sense or an example of what the scriptures are about, the living word of God in Holy Scripture. The more we go back to them, the more we pray with them, the more we listen to God's living word, even though we may have heard the passage dozens of times or perhaps a hundred times, the Holy Spirit leads us to deeper insights, to greater understanding to things that can help us to come closer to Almighty God. And that happened this past week as I was reading the gospel passage that we had this morning. We all know this passage very well. Mark and Matthew both have recorded in their gospels. And it's not the fact that Jesus is taking something of an opinion poll about what the crowd is thinking about. It's not so much the fact that Jesus asks those apostles with him the same question that we have to answer ourselves in our lives, who do we say that Jesus is? It's not Peter's profession of faith that he is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah who has come into the world. It is not even so much the fact that Jesus rebukes Peter. We, now, we can all understand where Peter's coming from, don't we? He loves his master. He wants nothing bad or ill to come to his master, and so he pulls them aside. We can't, you can't have that happen to you. But Jesus' words, these words, are what almost took my breath away, that lit up a light bulb in my heart. Jesus says, Peter, you are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Let that sink in, my brothers and sisters. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. I'm convicted. I think many times as, human, as a human being thinks, forgetting that we're here not because of anything we've done. We're here because God has created us in his love. He's created us for a purpose, and it's what he thinks and what he wills and what he desires that will bring me the fullness of life and allow me to enter in the depths of his divine life. Our first reading that we heard from the prophet Isaiah is directly tied into what Jesus is speaking about in the gospel today. Isaiah is a very long uh, book. In fact, the scholars tell us it was written over such a long period of time, there are three distinct sections, there are probably three authors to it. And in the middle section, there are these four songs, suffering servant songs. They are four revelations by God of how he is going to fulfill his plan to redeem humankind. The plan of God to bring forth redemption and salvation. And it is a suffering Messiah, a suffering servant who will accomplish the will of God. Now, throughout the history of the, of the people of God, their expectation of the Messiah was even greater than that, you might say. They were looking for a victor, somebody who would free them from slavery, who would who'd give them the, their place in the world of nations, someone who, of course, would bring them closer to God as well. And so this is kind of where Peter's coming from. 
thinking about the Christ and the Messiah. But Jesus speaks directly to what God has already revealed, that his role is to suffer greatly, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, be killed, and rise after three days. My friends, that's the basic gospel message, what we call the kerygma, the gospel in its simplest and purest form. Jesus, Son of God, Son of Mary, came into this world, he suffered, he died, and he rose and changed everything by his obedience to the Father's will. He had nothing to die for himself. He had no cause to, to suffer because of any sin of his own. But he took the sins, your sins, my sins, the sins of the entire world upon himself. He took it to the cross. He took on all of the suffering, all the degradation, all the injustices, all the things that are depraved about human life. He entered into the depths of that depravity, even into death itself, to bring his light, his divine presence, to conquer it, to be the victor, and to open up for us the gates of heaven, to give us access to the divine throne of mercy, to allow us, by grace, to begin to participate even here and now in the glory of God in eternity. And that is the gift that Jesus is speaking about. That is the gift that he offers to us. This is what happens at this altar. Jesus once again presents himself, his passion, his death and his resurrection, and then offers himself as food for the soul, food for the body, to give us the graces we need to do what he asks us to do. Because as disciples, he tells us, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. And how do we do that? <coughs> Deny oneself, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. That's not an easy task, but that's what we have been charged to do. And so the question continues to be asked of us. Are we thinking as God thinks, or are we thinking as human beings think? In our world, in this present moment that we are all living in, there are a lot of things that are troubling, concerning, overwhelming. We've been through a lot and we will go through a lot. But how are we thinking about the world? How are we thinking about ourselves? How do we see ourselves? God has given us his only son and Jesus gives us his body and blood, his soul and divinity, his grace to become all that God has created us to be. He has charged us to follow in his footsteps so that his grace in us and through us can change the world. Are we ready? How are we thinking? Do we think with God? Do we think as human beings?